In typical YouTube fashion, we are back and forth all over the place. Sometimes we're positive, sometimes we're negative. And today, you know, I wanted to take a look at the Arkham series, kind of looking back at it. We have talked before a lot about this series, and Jill and I wanted to talk about why it's so special to us, why it matters so much to us. And I have a lot of reasons I know Jill does too. Before we hop into this, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Uh, I'm not going to make this whole video about this, but the channel has been having a really, really hard time lately. I've been working very, very hard, honestly harder in the last year than I have ever in my life, to the point where it's detrimental to my health. And no matter really what I do, for some reason YouTube wants this channel to fail. I don't really know why, no matter how much it grows and how much we do. So your support means a lot to us and we really appreciate you. Not only that, but you've also been working really hard on my channel. That's true, Magical Jill, where we review toys and do other stuff like that, so the link to that is in the description down below if you want to check that out. I wanted to say with Arkham though, there are so many things to me that are special about it outside of the nostalgia. For example, the relationships in this. I think the relationship between someone like Batman and Joker is probably one of the best explored. A lot better than the Bat family's done in this. A lot of times they take, you know, the back seat. Now admittedly I have a lot of nostalgia I would say for this series, but there's a lot of stuff I like outside of the nostalgia as well and I'll kind of talk about both. For me, one of the big things with this series is just the dialogue, the characterization especially of Batman, and the idea of going up against overwhelming odds and still pushing through it. I think that's something that always really connected with me when it comes to Arkham, because it's pretty much always like, I guess a one-man army. You know, it's always like this idea of this guy is up against impossible odds, how can he do this? He's not even a superhuman, but he's still able to do it. You know, that level of perseverance and tenacity with this Batman is something that's always really stuck with me and really helped me in my own life when I have, like, problems, you know? The first time that I went and saw a Batman Arkham game at the store, I'm pretty sure I was at Bull Moose in Maine, and I saw Batman Arkham City, and I had no idea it was part of a series. I just knew I liked Batman, and I thought, oh, this could be fun. I don't know a ton about this character, I think it could be fun. And I, I was in a really depressed state in my life. And when I started playing that game specifically, it gave me so much joy and then I ha had to buy every single other one of the games and play all of them. And it just made me feel like I could do anything for a little while and like I wasn't so sad anymore. And I think that's one of the biggest reasons why I love the series so much is because it was kind of a comfort game in a bad time in my life. And, you know, speaking of that, too, I think that with this character, that's something that really sticks with a lot of people is the idea of a normal person, right? I mean, yes, I know he has money. Fine. But even in storylines where you take that away, he's still someone who can learn martial arts. Mm -hmm. He's still someone who can travel uh, and, and push through things. I mean, you take everything away, even in storylines like Dark Detective and stuff like that. Batman is still someone who can make it on his own. You know, obviously all the money and all this stuff, it amplifies what he's able to do, mm -hmm. especially on like more of a widespread scale. But I think it's really fun to see this guy. He's not Superman and it's, a, you know, no hate to Superman, one of my favorite fictional characters ever. He's not basically a god. He's just a guy. And to kind of see him push his own limits and push past that stuff. You know, that's something Kevin Conroy even talked about as well, about how much this character connects with people. A big part of it is that he is so human. Mm -hmm. And he pushes past the limitations of what make him human, but he's still at his core human. You know, he's still... He's both this force of nature, and yet also he's still in some ways the boy in the alley whose parents are dead in yeah. front of him. And I think that that kind of stuff helps him connect with people a lot. I think a lot of stories, they miss the caring aspect of Batman. and But that's one of my favorite parts about Batman. That's what I'm really happy about that they kind of showed in the Arkham series is some of the softer sides of him, even if they're kind of subtle. Because it shows that he's still a human and that he's still that little boy who was tortured, you know, in his mind by all of this horrible stuff that happened to him all in a row. Well, that's even one reason I really like something like Arkham Origins that gets a little bit more into the Bruce Wayne side of it. <laughs> even when he sees a family get murdered and he almost loses it and kills the criminal. Mm -hmm. Stuff like that. It shows that he's imperfect. Yeah. And I actually like that because <clears throat> I think that a lot of Batman stories mess up and they try and make him the most perfect guy ever who never fails, never makes a mistake. 
in Arkham, we get to see his mistakes. We get to see things like Jason. You know, we get to see things like his inability to deal further with the Joker before it's too late. And, you know, you can say, like, well, you agree with his code or whatever. But there is there is an argument to be made as well about the things that Joker is allowed to do in that universe to people especially close to Batman, like Barbara and Jason and others, um, and whether or not Batman could have done more, you know, to prevent that kind of stuff. I think that that kind of, that failure that you get to see and yet pushing past it, not like just giving up. That was something that really resonated with me, and that was one of the reasons why I really wanted to buy and play Night so badly is because I knew that was the end of the series and I was really excited to see it, but I didn't have an Xbox One at the time. Mm-hmm. Um, so I literally saved money from birthdays and stuff, like the kind of money my grandpa gave me for, I'm not kidding, like two years to be able to buy an Xbox One to be able to play that game. And I finally got to play it and I was so excited about it and I really liked it. And I had to look some stuff up and I looked that stuff up on my Google account, and I got somebody recommended to me in my YouTube feed, and I think one of the most special parts of the Arkham series to me is the fact that it's the reason why we met. Because I would have never found any of your videos, and I would have never joined your Discord, and I would have never talked to you if it hadn't been for those games. Yeah, I never would have gotten stalked. Yeah. It's just crazy. <laughs> yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I was going to get to that, too, is that, like, this series is directly responsible for solidifying or creating a lot of my friendships and relationships, mm-hmm. which is interesting to me. It's not something I can say as much about any other version of Batman, and I think the reason why, or really any other property, and I think the reason why is because of how accessible it is. I mean, at the end of the day, it's only a few games. Yeah. You know, that's really all it is. And that, they're everywhere. And that sucks to some extent because you're like, I want more games. You know, we've talked about, I want an origin sequel or like, let's see mm-hmm. a Terry game or a Justice League game in this universe. That kind of stuff I absolutely agree with. My cats are making me very upset in the background because they're screaming. But I think that with this series, it's something that's frustrating and yet amazing how accessible and how little of it there actually is because it means that a lot of people were exposed to Batman in this way. You know, just kind of like how a lot of people were exposed to Batman through the Dark Knight, and that Mm -hmm. was just kind of their thing, right? Mm -hmm. It's not dense, it's one movie. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people saw that and didn't even see Begins. Mm -hmm. They just saw it because it was a cultural phenomenon. I actually feel like this franchise swept through gaming that way, and in terms of relationships, you know, we met through this. Yeah. That's a big one, obviously, and you and I are married now. Yeah, um, that, and it made Nate like Batman more, too. That's true. Nate was kind of, like, not a big Batman fan because coming off of The Dark Knight, he was really frustrated with how everyone overhyped the character to no end, even though, to be honest, the, the as much as I like the Nolan verse, that's, like, one of the least impressive versions of Batman, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. He's Batman for, like, what, two years in that, in that continuity? But I think that with that, you know, I like that version of Batman. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. And I like a lot of versions of Batman, but versions like Arkham and versions like DCAU, I love those versions of Batman. I don't just like them. I love them. I love them, too. And a big reason for that, too, is how much it connects people. Like, how much... When I was a kid and I first met T, we met in study hall, actually. I had seen him before in a health class. I saw him from across the room and our eyes locked. Don't the starry lie. gazes. We were like Sailor Neptune and Sailor Uranus. Oh, no. Built for each other. Oh, no. But, um, you know, and back then he was fat, by the way. No, he wasn't. Yeah, yeah, he was. T used to be a big boy. He was like me right now. Really? Yeah, in, in middle school. Then he slimmed out and became a, 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 a twink. hunk. A he, be- hunk. he became a twink. I, you can't say that. Yeah, I you're... can. I'm gay. Well, okay, fine. Fair enough. I can't say that, I guess. But anyway, he, he became a, a stud, right? But back when I met him originally, you know, we we talked maybe once in a health course from across the room because he was a year younger than me. Then we met in a study hall and I remembered his name from that. And I was like, oh, hey, you know, uh, I, I remember you from health class. And we sat next to each other and he was the most stereotypical jock type hockey player, like long hair came off like a goon you know what i mean and he's hanging out with this like kind of fat nerdy guy who really is like into you know at the time like anime and k-pop and like all kinds of you know stuff that probably would not be considered normal at my like ultra christian school we were at and i remember one time we were talking it was one of the first times we sat by each other and he was like hey you know, I know you're a fan of superheroes and stuff because you, you've talked about the movies before. The point I'm getting to is he brought that up 
and, and and said, you know, I know you like superheroes. Have you ever played these games? Like I played this game, Batman Arkham Asylum, a couple of years ago, and it got me really into this. Like I played this, then I went and I watched The Dark Knight, and I started watching the Batman the Animated Series, and I love this character now. And he was like, I never thought I'd like it. I thought it was for little kids, but it's amazing. Like you know, That's and I sweet. I know you like Batman. Have you ever played these? And I was like, I I've never played this. I didn't know what Arkham was at the time because I was in you know. Uh, I guess eighth or ninth grade at the time, and I just didn't really know. And I got my Xbox 360 very late because my family didn't have a lot of money. The money they did have w was just spent putting me in that school because mm -hmm. it was important to my mom and dad. Yeah. And so for me, I saved up. I bought my Xbox 360 late, and I bought it around that time. T introduces me to Arkham, and he shows me the trailer for Arkham City, and it was like a combat trailer. And then I remember he shows me one of Batman Arkham videos uh, combat breakdowns with the 1970s bat suit and we just talked about it back and forth tons and then it came up that i had watched justice league as a kid and we started talking about that stuff this is how t and i became friends we hit it off and, through this and now he is arguably as big of a nerd as you are absolutely yeah he's not even super into sports anymore he still is right but like he loves harry potter and he still loves batman and you get him comic books for christmas yeah and, and I always thought that that was really special as that's kind of how that friendship started. And I want to add on to that, too, with Nate. I've talked about it before with Nate. Luna is trying to do a jailbreak back here. So I'm if you sorry. hear stuff going on, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but when it comes to Nate, we became friends through Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, like uh, we wanted to play Yu-Gi-Oh! together and stuff. And after that, though, because that was just one common interest, right? Over time, what ended up happening was we talked about other stuff. And a big thing that we had in common that we liked was superheroes. So we went and we saw superhero movies together. Like, we saw the first Thor together. And we saw, the I think, the very first Avengers movie together. And that kind of turned into, hey, have you ever played Batman Arkham? And then we started talking about that. And then it got to the point where he would come over to my house after school and help me with Riddler trophies. Because I was kind of a dumb kid. I couldn't Aww. figure a lot of these out when I was younger. And then I would go to his house later on when he got it on the Wii U. He got Arkham City. <laughs> And I would help him with that, too. And it kind of went back and forth. And this is a big part of how our friendship started happening and how we started playing games together. Because mm -hmm. before that, Nate and I, we both liked video games, but we didn't really play them together. We'd go to movies or play Yu-Gi-Oh! or stuff like that. The Let's Play channel itself wouldn't even be around if Nate and I hadn't started playing Arkham City together. And I think that's something that's really interesting to me. Like, Now, I don't mean to, to make those stories way longer than our marriage. Like, obviously, of course, I'm very thankful that our marriage came from Arkham, but you explain that story. Yeah, and, um, and I think one of the biggest things about that, too, is when I was younger, a lot of people in my school weren't super into, like, superheroes same. or... Or video games or anything like that. I didn't really have any friends who were like into that stuff. My a lot of my friendships with other girls had to be revolved around like dumb stuff like makeup, which I still like, but it's not my entire personality. You know, a right? Big, you had to pretend it was right. Yeah, and a big like a huge part of my personality is video games, and that's one of the reasons why I became such good friends with my friend Gracie is because she was one of the other only other girls that I knew who loved video games almost as much as I do. Mm -hmm. uh, and it meant a lot to me. And so I would talk to her all the time about Batman Arkham and stuff, and I'd tell her, you know, I really wish that I could meet somebody who loved Batman and, and superheroes and video games as much as I do and, like, wanted to be with me, you know? And, you know, we kind of talked about that sort of thing, and I think about it all the time as, like, kind of wishing that I had more people in my life who cared about those things. And I kind of took that leap to join your Discord and try to talk to you and other people in there just because of Batman Arkham. And I think it's really special to me that that ended up being the reason why I became much more of an extroverted person rather than somebody who was just alone and sad and had only one friend. Well, and this too is why I think that when people are like to me, well, Jay, why do you care that the Arkham Origins multiplayer isn't really supported anymore? Like, why do you care about this niche, stupid thing? It doesn't really matter. It's like, a big reason some of these things matter so much to me is they have such a personal connection to me. You know, I even remember when I was younger and I would sit, and T and I would sit in a lobby waiting for 20 minutes to find a match in stupid Arkham Origins. Because the, <laughs> the multiplayer took forever on Xbox 360. I remember and, when you guys did live streams and you literally waited 20 minutes in between for, like, matches, too. Oh, it was longer now. Yeah. But, you know, like, my point that I'm saying is, is like, it, it was worth it to us, you know, because it was this thing that matters to, mattered so much to us. And we would go, 
Nate and I would go and, and T and I would go and we would look for the energy drinks that had like the pre-order code to get the Batman Beyond suit in, in Arkham City. I like stuff that. like that. Like they locked certain stuff. Now obviously it's a it's a crummy practice mm -hmm. in hindsight, but they you know, you'd be able to get a code for a for a skin in the game from like buying a I don't know if it was like a Rockstar energy or a Vault energy or whatever it was at the time. Um, or a Red Bull or whatever, but I just remember going and looking for those specifically, and it was something so exciting. This is something I brought up with T in a video where we talked about Call of Duty. I think that we were the right age when this came out, mm -hmm. you know, where it was like magical to us. Mm -hmm. And you get into this world, and you don't think about the confines of the world. So you get into Arkham City, or you get into even the Asylum that's a lot more linear, or you get into Origins, and you look around the world, and your brain is not thinking of, where can't I go? It's not thinking of, well, how much did they program in here? It's not thinking about it like a game. It's not thinking about it like a product. I feel like so many games now, you sit down and you look at it and your brain immediately recognizes the product of it. Yeah. It recognizes the microtransaction or it recognizes uh, the segmented player base or DLCs or, or whatever. But, but with those games, it felt like you were stepping into a different world. Yes, exactly. It's kind of like playing Skyrim for the first time. Yeah, which is a magical experience. And you're, you're like, wow. It, and it's not, where can't I go? Like in terms of like, well, how do I find the boundaries so I know where it is? It's you feel like you can go anywhere, even yeah. though you can't. It's like, how many things can I do in one day in this game? And, and speaking of that, in terms of the game itself, because I do want to talk about some stuff in the games that's so special to me real quick, too, without making this too long. Oh, I have one thing I want to say about that specifically, mm -hmm. is uh, especially with Arkham Origins, the detective stuff when you were solving crime scenes and things like that, that really brought me back to being a kid, and the only Nancy Drew game that I had was the one where she's at a carnival. I forget the exact name. Uh, but it's like a... The Carnival of Booty Shorts. I think it's like the Haunted Carousel. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, and um, I absolutely love detective games. I've always loved Scooby-Doo. I'm really into mysteries. I always have been. And when I could do the detective stuff in Batman, it brought me back to being a kid again, and, and it reminded me of how much I absolutely loved being a, a detective when I was a kid, because I used to walk around the house pretending to be Sherlock Holmes sort of thing, mm -hmm. and I had a little spy kit with a magnifying glass, and I'd solve mysteries in my backyard and I think that's one of the most magical memories I have about playing the Arkham games too. I pretended to be the less problematic member of the team Watson <laughs> so I think it says a lot about you. Well back then I didn't know Sherlock Holmes was problematic. Well I think you're done you're canceled it's <laughs> over but in terms of Arkham 2 I think the biggest thing and I want to make a video talking about this specifically about the world building is the Easter eggs. I have never in my life and there probably exists a game, I don't know. I have never seen a game series so dedicated to the past and the world of the character. Mm -hmm. You walk around in, you know, Wayne Tower, Wayne Enterprises, and you answer a, a voicemail and it's Batwoman. Mm -hmm. You go into one of Penguin's clubs and you see a poster of Zatanna, mm -hmm. you know, talking about her magic. You drive down the street and you see references to Black Canary. A game like Arkham City where one of the big focuses of a side plot is having a mysterious stalker and you don't really know who he is, and it turns out to be Azrael, and you as Bruce Wayne step through the gates to Arkham City, you're basically being just absolutely brutalized, and on your right before you go through is Black Mask getting destroyed by the Tiger security forces. But up ahead, if you look at the right time, Azrael is standing above in the background watching Bruce because he knows. These levels of detail in the Arkham games, not only just for dedicated Easter eggs, I mean, anyone can do Easter eggs. Anyone can just throw crap into a world and be like, oh look, Doctor Strange exists here too in this world, oh whoa, you know, like for Marvel. That's kind of how I feel like they do it in Gotham Knights. Yeah, and, and I still like them in, in Gotham Knights. I still enjoy them. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's something really special about how they did them in, in Arkham, where it feels integrated into the world. And, mm -hmm. and it feels like characters are in the background doing stuff. Yeah. When a character closes a door and they despawn in the game's you know code, and they're not technically in the game at the same time as you walking around, in your brain, 
or in the game's narrative, you know they're there. Yeah. You know that they're back there doing something, whether they are on screen or not. I think that's something really special that a lot of games never get right. That's something that I really liked in City, too, is when you can hear Harley and Joker talking, even though they're in a room and you can't see them talking, you know that they're in there doing something. And do you remember what they're saying, too, in one of those? It's actually giving away a big twist of the game. Yeah, when they're, when they're talking about, like, Harley, don't give it away, because she's talking about... How Clayface, Clayface looks just like him. Yeah. Yeah, and they were trying to make it seem like he wasn't sick when he was. Yeah, and that level of detail and and intelligence in the writing and in the world building. You can say what you want. Like, I'll always have criticisms. Do I wish the Bat Family was in this more? Absolutely. That's why I wish Gotham Knights was a Bat Family game in the Arkham Universe. I, think I really could, wish that. I think that could have been a lot better. Um, but the way that they did things was so special and memorable. And... You know, there are still people finding stuff. A few years ago, people found that whole thing with Calendar Man where he talks about the Rocksteady founding date. And he talks about how, you know, he was there at the beginning and he'll be there at the end. And then when you watch the very ending scene of Nightfall in Arkham Knight, you can see Calendar Man in the crowd watching as Wayne Manor explodes. Wow, I didn't know that. That kind of level of detail, it's... It's so meticulously thought out. You know why? Because they care. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's really where the core comes up. Like, why do we love Arkham so much? The creators did. I'm really hoping that Suicide Squad has as much love in it as those games do. Because they are really, really special to lots of people. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I'll, you know, I'll always have my things like, this gadget is worthless. Or like, oh, I really don't like this character. But at the end of the day, overall... This is, to me, one of the most special versions of Batman to ever exist. And I love that you actually get to use gadgets in that game. That's one of my pet peeves with Gotham Knights, is I wish at least Batgirl had some cool gadgets. Yeah, there's not a lot compared to Arkham. Not I, really, no. I agree. And it's something that they got so right, and it was genre-changing. Mm -hmm. The combat in Arkham, everybody wanted to be it. Yes. Everybody switched from button mashy, like, oh, just smash square or X, to rhythm-based combat. Mm -hmm. Did you notice that? How after this game, how many clones were there that were like, oh, we should try and be like Arkham? Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, Shadow so, of Mordor does a similar thing. People get mad when you say Spider-Man, but I agree, because Spider-Man before that was very focused on, like, mash square and then dodge, but this is a lot... Like, Spider-Man, the Amazing Spider-Man games, and then the, obviously, Marvel Spider-Man mm -hmm. and Miles Morales, those all became much more very clearly inspired by something yep. like Arkham. Yeah. Rhythm, you yeah. know? Instead of just... Oh man, how do I? All right, I gotta beat him. And doing perfect dodges. Yeah, it's yeah. it's now more like okay, well, how do I find that rhythm? Mm -hmm. And even especially Spider Man, you know, in in Arkham, I think it really started to happen in City, especially where it's like, well, it would be easier if I'm in the middle of the combat and I freeze grenade that guy, mm -hmm. or it'd be easier if I take out this shield. Those kinds of ideas make it so well into something like Marvel Spider-Man. Now, that doesn't mean Insomniac, some kind of plagiarist jerk. I think people read into that when you say that kind of stuff. All it means is that this was a really special way to do it, and other companies took note of that, and they said, you know what? That's really intelligent. This is a way to elevate superhero games. I kind of think Assassin's Creed, in some ways, was inspired by some of that, too, as well. Yeah, it became a little more rhythm-based over yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. And then it became much more numbers-based, so obviously it's different now. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, especially that age of, like, Unity, Syndicate, and, um, you know, some of those games, I mm -hmm. think that that was very Arkham-y inspired. Mm -hmm. And I, I love how this franchise also, in a kind of a closing statement for me, and I want to hear anything you still have to say, uh, but this franchise... I think made people think stealth games weren't boring. Because, <laughs> That's because true. Because before this, people would always rag on them. And, and I know Metal Gear is amazing. It's like one of my favorite things ever. And I love Splinter Cell. Like us stealth fans, like those of you in the crowd are like, no, stealth games aren't boring. I'm right there with you. But think about it. There were a ton of people. This was like the gateway drug. Mm -hmm. You know, like a lot of people were like, oh, I don't want to waste my time crouching around and going behind the guy and then doing this. Like they didn't have the patience for that. But Arkham made you feel like such a badass that people were like, that's awesome. And yeah. it introduced people into that style of game without them being so impatient. Yeah, the Predator stuff is some of my favorite stuff in the Arkham games. One of my favorite moves is when you're on like a gargoyle above a guy and you wait for him to go right below you and you press Y and you like string him up upside down. It's really funny to me. Yeah, and then you drop him on the next guy. Like if you go to a different one, you throw a battering at him. Yeah, it's hilarious. It's there one of my favorite things. I love that you can do so many different things to take the guys out and you really have to actually think about it and you can like 
plan out your moves. I think that's really interesting and thought provoking. And I've always been really into strategy games, especially like I play management games for fun. It's it's really cool just how this game series affects people and how passionate they are about it, too. Uh, that years later we can talk about it and people care. Mm -hmm. You know, like years later we could sit down, we could make a, a big essay video on Arkham Asylum. People would watch it. It's one of those cultural phenomenon things. Yeah. Part of me is very sad that this series is so extremely special to me and it kind of feels like it just got the gutter and it kind of feels like they just don't really care about making anything for it anymore and it breaks my heart because it was something that I found really important to me growing up and it's really important to me because of you as well. So the fact that it kind of feels like it's just kind of been thrown away kind of feels like a breakup in a lot of ways. It does too, especially because they never did anything to improve Night in terms mm -hmm. of like make it run on newer hardware, or like fix it up. Um, the Arkham Return to Arkham remasters, even if you enjoy them uh, in the audience, they are half-hearted. You know, they're not high frame rate. They still have the same problems the originals have. Some of the textures look better, some worse. They never gave a shit about Origins. Origins just stayed where it was. Yep. Uh, unless you have a gaming PC, that thing does not look great now. Yeah. Well, Jay, it looks fine. It does look fine. But I'm saying watch my Let's Play on it on PC where I souped the thing up. Compare it to a 360 or a PS3. Yeah. And they never really cared to bring that up and fix it up. You know, and that's, that's kind of something I don't want to like end on a negative note, but that is something that frustrates me about... What happened with this is I think this was the perfect, like the DCAU for animation, this was the perfect ongoing canon mm -hmm. to just keep going mm -hmm. as, make long, more stories in. as long as it's good and do stuff with different characters. Wonder Woman, Superman, all these characters, you know, there was no reason it had to stop. And imagine if every superhero game was as special as Arkham, or was as special as Insomniac Spider-Man. It, it really bothers me, too, that they had so much room to make a Batgirl game in that universe, because Origins, you're introduced to her, and you meet her, and in Night, you see stuff back when she was in as Batgirl. They could have easily made a Batgirl game set in between Origins and Asylum. And we've talked about Jason, too. It would have been amazing to see him as Robin in an Origins sequel. Or to see the ending of the relationship with Dick Grayson and Batman until, you know, that was fixed later. There's so many different things. And that's just in the Bat family. Yeah. That's ignoring Superman and Wonder Woman and the Justice League. And forever, all the rumors around it, too, were so interesting and special. Like Arkham Insurgency or they're going to do a Justice League game after City or all these different things. I just don't see the point of making new games that aren't in the continuity. Like, Gotham Knights should have just been in Arkham. Uh, I feel like they should have made something else before they made a Suicide Squad game. Yeah. And uh, they should have kind of pushed a Justice League sort of thing. I think it would have been really awesome. They didn't even have to only have Rocksteady do the games. Right. I know this is going a little off topic, but I just kind of think that they could have done more and it really breaks my heart that they didn't. But I think WB Montreal proved they could make a good Batman game. I just think they didn't have enough time. Yeah. You know, so at the, at the end of the day, like, I don't want to end on a negative note. I want to add that the reason we feel that way is because it's so special to us. Because, because we of, love it. Because of all these things and because it still means so much to people. And it is it is odd to me. You and I have talked about this. We talked about this with Sailor Moon. We've talked about this with the DCAU. We've talked about this with other stuff. You'll have stuff like the MCU that no matter how big of a fan someone in the audience is of it or no matter how much we like a lot of it, will just go on indiscriminately forever. Or Star Wars that like regardless of any you know road bumps or speed bumps it'll just keep soldiering on no matter what even when a lot of people don't want it to and then there's a lot of stuff that just doesn't get enough content right and it's really upsetting because it's like i want more of that specifically i don't want more of some of this other stuff right i'm good on it it's like i i there's so much of some stuff and not enough of this yeah there's there's not enough arkham in the world there's and never a sweet spot no but let us know anything in the comments down below. What made this so special to you? Why do you care about it? Uh, you know, what what are your thoughts on it overall? I know this matters a lot to a lot of people, but why? You know, what made this connect with you? Do you have special memories of it? Um, for me, my friendships being formed, like a lot of them, uh, lasting ones from this is something really special to me. My marriage, obviously, is something that wouldn't exist without this series. That's pretty crazy stuff. And, you know... I've been really upset with the channel in the last year because I'm trying really hard. I don't blame the audience. I blame YouTube for not showing people stuff. Um, but regardless of that, I wouldn't have ever been put in a position I am in where like there are dedicated people who are interested in this channel without Arkham, mm -hmm. you know, because it's something that 
united us. Mm -hmm. And even though we talk about different stuff, it'll always have that spark of like how we all found each other. Mm -hmm. I think that's something really special that I, I, you know, no amount of like corporate mismanagement or not caring can ever take that away from like the core quadrilogy of Arkham games. It's like what Taylor Swift says, we all have an invisible string tied together to all of us. And I'm super hot. She said that too. That too, that too. She said that. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. We appreciate you very, very much. We hope you have a fantastic day, everyone. Uh, if you want to support this channel, you know, leaving a like, subscribing, talking in the comments, those things all really help. If you ever want to share the video with anyone, family members, friends, or on social media, those things really help us out too. Mention Enchanted Glamour. We do have a store, Degenerate J Store, which is Degenerate J A Y Store.com, which actually, is also Enchanted Glamour, which is G L A M O R.com. Yes, it's EnchantedGlamour.com first. It's Degenerate, Degenerate J Store second. Get it right. Anyways, awesome, really high quality comic book resin pieces there from recycled comic book pages that were getting thrown out, really cool coasters, uh, keychains. Jewelry. Jewelry as well, like really good jewelry and stuff like that as awesome well. Awesome jewelry, actually. The best jewelry you'll ever see. Some people say they buy it bigly. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's a great site. And we also have a Let's Play channel, Degenerate Plays, where we play through games together and hang out. So we hope you'll check those things out. Right now we're playing through Assassin's Creed Brotherhood and Gotham Knights, actually. Yeah. So I'll also Monster High. Yeah. So we'll see you in the next one. Have a fantastic day. And as always, everyone, day shui.